Hello and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name is Todd. And today we have a, what is this? This is an oddball. This is a uh, AQ. This is an AQ amplifier. Um, AQ what? I'm not quite sure, but it is an AQ amplifier. Built really close like the DC, probably like the 1.2K uh, amplifier. Almost really close in design. So, um, no obvious shorts, but it would it would power up, power off. Mm, so there was a protection circuit, but I'm not showing any obvious shorts. I'm getting the sine wave into the output drive card. Uh, switching's a little iffy, but you know these cards are notorious anyways. You got to rebuild these, so I'm going to rebuild this card. But as I'm going around pulling these clips off, I pulled them all off. And then I'm backing off these transistors off the heat sink. Uh, let's see if I'm not sure if you guys can see it because of the fantastic glare of my lights. But I started working right back here, just moving the uh, what are these 640s or probably 640s. Hold on, let me check. Let me get you guys some information here. Uh, 640. And the 9640. Typical, typical, typical. 640s on one side, 9640s on the other side. So I'm just scooting these transistors off off of the heatsink here. And then I go around and I, I get to the rectifiers and the rectifier falls right over. Look at that. Both rectifiers are broke off right at the board. So there's your failure point of this amplifier uh so what usually what happens is you're running you're you're just pounding away and the uh, amplifier itself is under some extreme vibration you know and things start coming loose well what happens is that little those little jolts those little points where the circuit opens and closes really fast creates a lot of current and what happens is it'll go through and it, it just kind of destroys everything past the uh, point of the issue, I should say. So this is basically uh, not a rail short, but a lack of rail voltage uh, at some point. So it would send one side to a low voltage condition. But that was just this side. So I'm not sure if it's just the rectifiers uh, that have broken on this, but I just really wanted to point out that vibration just wrecks havoc on amplifiers. Vibration, vibration. I'm. We could talk all day about under voltage, over voltage, low impedance. Uh, you know, just treating these completely the way they shouldn't be treated. But. When it comes down to a lot of things, vibration is going to break something on your amp. And then as I back these transistors off the heatsink, they'll you know you can you'll get used to the sound that they make, and you'll know when one's broke, at least one leg. Oh, look at that! Another rectifier fell right off. What do you think that rectifier is going to do? Do you think that's going to fall off? I don't know. You want to know some of the hardest parts to get for an amplifier? Oh, fell right over. So, some of the hardest parts to get for an amplifier are bipolar capacitors. Got one right here in the middle. That's a bipolar capacitor. So, it's 250 volt, 10 microfarad bipolar capacitor. Hope and pray that stays in one piece. Otherwise, you can get away with a uh, film capacitor. I always have one on display here. 
Uh, but you can always get away with a film capacitor, especially like right here where you have a lot of room to be able to stick one of these in. It fits right in there and it'll take place of that. Um, otherwise, you might be able to find some 10 microfarad bipolar capacitors. I do have some. I think they're actually 10 microfarad capacitors uh, that I did find. I got 25 of them. So... Uh, my goal for 2023 is to have a wider uh, availability of capacitors, uh, bipolar capacitors and film capacitors. Where was I? Oh, the rectifiers. Oh, yeah, look, fell right over. I'm kind of leaving them in their spot here so I know where I'm at, what I'm looking for. And now I'm just going to see if any of the power supply transistors has managed to... Uh, also join in if you guys ever uh, have a problem getting these transistors to pop free just tap it real lightly to right at the on the top of the transistors just tap it right on the top and it usually will break the transistor free from the uh, uh, thermal management that they're using some gap pads will be pretty sticky, so you got to be uh, be prepared to replace the gap pad. But this is definitely a failed rectifier amplifier because all four rectifiers are broke off at the board, which is very unfortunate. Although I do carry rectifiers. Which ones are these? These are oh <sighs> doublers. These are doublers. Um, so another, <laughs> as I was saying, the hard things to get, bipolar capacitors and rectifiers. Rectifiers, believe it or not, are problematic to get for these bigger amps. Uh, so you always wanna be prepared um, when you're doing amplifier repair to have the parts at least in a basket waiting to be ordered, um, located, have your prices already determined by your suppliers. How about you gotta be just right on top of the game when it comes to parts. Uh, so when I get an amp in, I'll diagnose it. And uh, it's about four to six weeks from uh, quote acceptance to completion. So that gives me, you know, a month to order parts if I need to order parts. Cause some parts I gotta get from overseas, which does take a little while to get here. If I choose to not spend the $80 to, you know, ship it DHL or FedEx. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to probably assume it is going to be a fault in the card due to the surges uh, that were present on the rail from the broken rectifiers. Um, oh, and I said these were doublers, but let me tell you what doublers are here. These are the uh, FMU 32s. I do have uh, some doublers that my supplier has available. Um, I don't carry doublers. I carry the 33Rs and Ss, the uh, common anode and common cathode rectifiers, but I really don't carry doublers. So it's just rare that doublers, or I should say it's rare for rectifiers to fail. Um, a lot of boards, I know, I just don't have to replace rectifiers. So um, I'm going to need four rectifiers here and rebuild the card. But I just wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, just some of the things that will fail and obvious things, as I throw it around, obvious things that fail, like uh, vibration damage, rectifiers. You can get that on any component, not just rectifiers, but transistors, inductors, like for the Brazilian boards, the inductors are just a huge common issue, uh, breaking up the board. Uh, you can have vibration damage from transformers. Uh, so vibration is just an af absolute amplifier destroyer. So please guys, keep them mounted in at least the best you can in a uh, vibration free kind of mounting style like rubber mat underneath just something to help 
reduce the vibration. So even in the table here, you can see the vibration. Uh, anything to help reduce vibration, help uh, help the longevity of your amplifier. So, I, of course, I'm going to have to tear this all apart and everything. So I'm not at the point to repair this due to the time that it is right now because I uh, wasn't anticipating having to uh, purchase rectifiers for this amplifier. So that was not quoted because this was all still clipped in. I didn't have a drive signal when I quoted it. So I knew right at the bat it was, I had a card issue because I didn't have any shorts in the transistors. But... I did not know that I had broken rectifiers. So this kind of changes things. Uh, so I have to kind of uh, just kind of set this one aside. So and order up the rectifiers. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always, please stay safe. Keep your fingers out of the rails. These rails can get significantly high in voltage and current. There's a lot of available current. So um, thank you guys. If you have comments, leave them down below and I'll get to you guys just as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.